Hey everybody, welcome to Developer Commentary. I'm Mike Stout. I'm Teal, the greatest Let's Player ever, apparently. Yes, exactly. And uh, this is Eudora. And everybody, you should take note of this uh, this little robot guy with the robot cigar. Because uh, he was supposed to be a boss at the end of this level. And in fact, he's a giant coward now. <laughs> yes, he just runs off. Uh, originally, he had uh, a much more realistic robot cigar that, that, that blew smoke. But the ESRB told us we couldn't have that in an uh, E rate, or I think it was an E rated game. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, T cause did. It's this a seven. Deal. Yeah, because it's a seven no, now. It was a T. That's what it was. It was T. But we couldn't have smoking in the game without it being a M. Do you want me to go for the suck cannon, or do you want me to just do the pe trespasser route? Um, might as well go for the suck cannon. Okie dokie. Um, oh, so I, there's actually another interesting story. Uh, you know the little mushroom things that are growing on some of these trees? Yeah. I don't know if it's possible to see, uh, and it would be oh. neat if somebody could try this, but Dan's face is in every single one of those. What? Really? <laughs> Yeah, you, you know Dan, right? Like the Dan, Snow Dan? Yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan, Jun Dan really? Johnson. Dan Johnson, yeah. Really? Uh, in every single one of those mushrooms, if you look at them from the right angle, Dan's face is there. Wait, 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 wait. Which, which mushrooms? Um, they're, they're, they're always growing on trees. So if you see like a mushroomy flower thing growing on a tree. Wow, I know he's in um, the next place, which is a space station. He's in the, um, the green tubes. Yes, um, and... Uh, and also, uh, uh, one of the artist's kids is in some photographs. Really? Yeah. There's like pictures of a family on the wall, and that's uh, <laughs> Craig, Stitt's, Craig Stitt's kids. Huh. Or okay, kid. Then. I, okay, then. Let's see. But I, yeah, somewhere around here there are mushrooms, and they usually are on trees. Oh, and th these mushrooms. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is you have to be able to look inside of them. You have to be able to get the camera to look inside of them. I can do this. Give me a second. And then we'll have to pause it. But it, yeah, you see, they made it really difficult to tell. But Dan's face is textured onto the inside of those. Now, in the HD version, they might have taken it out. Actually, oh, no, I can but... see him. Look, it's there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Dan. Oh, my God. As far Who as I know, this hell might... could tell that's there. <laughs> this might be the very first time anyone has ever seen that ever. Oh so... my! It very possible. I've never heard of that. It and I very... know a lot about Ratchet. The <laughs> and only apart reason from I the stuff that there. you mentioned. <laughs> the only reason... anything in developer condo. <laughs> well, the only reason I knew it was there was because the artist who did it told me. Right. So, yeah, I never would have known if if it hadn't been for that. No. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's no, yeah. actually amazing. It so is. That's so cool. He looks a little well, bit like Heisenberg there. <laughs> Twelve years later, there's still something new to find out about this game. Oh, I mean, that's that's not surprising. There's, there's loads of games actually that have. I think there's something in Banjo Kazooie that's never been told. There's a secret still hidden in there somewhere. Yeah. I think somebody found uh, somebody found a new secret in Mario or a new bug in Mario recently. Oh, which one? Uh, I'd have to look it up on on the. Oh, do you mean the original? It might have been the original. There's, but there's there's the one with uh, one and two player, and you can get infinite lives. The one I know from the original is the one where you could be small and still shoot fireballs. Oh, really? Yeah. That I have not seen. The, it's basically, the way it works is, uh, and this is a huge tangent, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you become Big Mario, mm -hmm. right? And then in a level where you fight Bowser, you have to touch the little axe thing that removes the drawbridge at the same moment that you touch Bowser's head and get shrunk down. Oh my god, that's brilliant. <laughs> and if you do that correctly, Mario will kind of ice skate to Toad, and then he'll <laughs> stay big, and you can get a fire flower and it'll make him small. Right. And then every time you throw a fireball, he turns big for a second and then small again. Huh. So you can get through the you can get through the spinning fire things at the end of the game a lot easier because oh, you're small, brilliant. but but you can still shoot fireballs. That's so cool. I I have never seen that. Uh, the one I was thinking I of again tangent. Uh, the uh, the one I was thinking of was basically it's one and it's the version where you play one and two player. Um, you play as play as Mario, then you play as Luigi, um, then 
you you get to a very specific level, and I can't remember specifically what. Like you you get to, no you get to, you play as Mario and get to one dash two, then you die, then you get Luigi to a specific level in like world eight, and you activate um, a vine uh, to skip the world or something. Actually, it might be four dash two, um, okay. and then when you when you play as Mario, the vine is there. So you use um, the shell from the uh, Koopa, um, and you you're standing on the vine, so it just constantly bounces underneath you, and you get infinite lives. It's it's oh, rid it's I ridiculous and incredibly elaborate, but it exists. Well, and that sounds really hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... it's super. It's, I, it's amazing. It, I was just because I, I was watching it for about three minutes, and like, where's this going? Why has this got a million views? What's go? It's Japanese. What's going on? Something big's gonna happen. Oh my God! This is it. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I never was even able to do the, you know, the turtle shell infinite lives one. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I could never get that to work. Like, I had a bunch of friends who could do it. Never. I could do the small fireball thing, but never the, never the turtle thing. But I don't think that was in the first game because that's only just been discovered. Um, I think it was in World. Oh, well. well, no, the, the, there was a different turtle shell oh, okay. in the first game where oh, okay. uh, it's, in a certain level there was a turtle walking downstairs and you could jump on it in such a way oh, okay. that it would bounce and you would just jump on it forever and then after you jumped on it ten times you'd start getting one-ups. Ah, oh, okay. Fair. And so if you just kept hitting jump, you could get as many lives as you wanted to. Yeah. Fair. Or I think it might have even automatically jumped you at that point. Yeah, probably did because you're too you're so close to the wall. But ah, interesting. Didn't know yes, Mario. Yeah, a uh, smart. Yeah. This, uh, room what? right here. This is the boss room. Oh, really? Yeah, this, this was the room where you were gonna fight the the, the robot ah, guy. Because you go a completely different route to get to him now. And he, uh, appear, he appears I, in a different room. I might be wrong. This might actually just be a the same exact looking room. Yeah, possibly. I mean, there are a few of them like it. I wouldn't but... be surprised. I mean, we, we reuse stuff like that a lot. We would usually just change the set dressing so it didn't seem exactly the same. Yeah, no, I... I like, I... Whenever you've said stuff like that, I've never noticed it before you've said it, so you've done a good <laughs> job of hiding the fact that it's the same assets a few times. Yeah, the, our artists were really good at that. Mm. Uh, Working under limitations and making things just really beautiful. Mm. Well, the, the first game that Insomniac ever made uh, was uh, that first person shooter, Destructor. Yeah. Disruptor? Yeah. Disruptor. Disruptor, yeah. Well, the, all of the environment art in that game was done by inputting numbers into an Excel file. Really? Yeah, one vertice at a time. Uh. <laughs> and uh, actually, Ted Price was the one who did that. What would it oh, poor man. <laughs> the way it worked was an artist so the studio didn't have enough money to afford the, the 3D modeling program because they were really expensive back then. So they had one copy of it. And the artist would model something and then print out the coordinates. And then Ted would take the coordinates and input them into Excel one at a time. That did not go well. <laughs> oh so you can imagine how good the studio got at working within insane constraints, given that they started with a game that was made in Excel. Mm -hmm. So, any, uh, yeah. Any Un stories on the suck cannon? Any innuendos that were made initially when it was designed? <laughs> well, every innuendo. Good. Uh, <laughs> I should there, hope uh, so. I, I think at one point uh, we, we made the joke that Captain Quark makes about the... Uh, uh, what was the, the the personal hygienator? Oh right. Was there <laughs> but, ever uh, was there ever a point where you thought it was going to be a weapon? Or... The hygienator? Yeah. The suck cannon. Uh, the hygienator. The hygienator was always a joke. Uh, I kind of w would have liked to see that she was like a pen knife stroke slash artery. Cloth. I don't know. What was the what was the thing he was testing at the end of Ratchet Two? Like the genital ripper? Oh, I, I can't remember. Crotchetizer. Oh, crotchetizer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that does pretty much exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's his face as well. It's great. <laughs> uh, 
Perfect. I, my favorite line that Crafting Quark ever says, ever, is, I am currently sporting a smooth chassis. Yeah. There's no tags on well, my right, luggage. Like it's... <laughs> Just does that so perfectly. I laughed every time I saw it. Yeah. Actually, uh, in my Until I Die, I actually um, initially died here because the swing shot didn't, doesn't appear sometimes. Also, um, I went back to see if I could despawn it and try it again. Um, and I jumped off a wall which didn't exist. I jumped off nothing and it killed me and it, that inadvertently killed me. So I died by two glitches and people said I should continue. So I was like, all right, parallel universe B. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think glitches, uh, that, that shouldn't count. No, well, I, I always count it anyway, just because it is what it is. If it happens, it happens. But with people voted that I continue. So I was like, all right. So was no, this the good. boss? They want to see it. They want to see it, right? This is the boss room? This mo yeah, this the, it's the exact same room. It's yeah. just in a different place. Yep, and he shits out a thing in Infobot. Well, the reason that there's no words in this sequence was because he got cut after... Uh, yeah. Uh, so, they, they, you know, they have the two lines, right? But most of that, there's nothing. Because yeah. they, they didn't have time to animate as much and, you know... Well, that sort of looks like the cutscene after you beat him. Like, you beat him, but he just runs away. I think he was supposed to be... Uh, destroyed and oh, you get okay. like the him crapping out the infobot was the part that was added right okay oh my god his face <laughs> oh, oh, oh i love these i love the, the gadgetron testing i miss the gadgetron testing you don't get enough of it like it, it stops after this game i told well no there's still some um like in in Mega Corp and uh, no no like, okay. why is yeah, Billy sad? Well. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, but after two, it sort of stops. No, that's true. Well, it was different. It was different writers after that point. Oh okay, was it? I so didn't know in, that. Uh, the third game was written by uh, uh, it was half written by one of our animators uh, and one of our character artists. They were they were two of the authors, and then during that game. We had hired our first professional writer ever, and he wrote the rest of that story, and then he wrote Deadlocked, and then TJ, the guy who wrote the Ratchet and Clank movie, and oh, yeah. he, he wrote all the PS3 Yeah, games. the future series. Yeah. And he's really good. I love did, did he write Nexus as well? Uh, he did write Nexus, yeah. That I was last love ever. Nexus. Oh my oh. god. It, free you know crack of time in Nexus. Right? Yes, yes, actually. Yeah, I, I let's played it and I streamed it and I because I actually I had the world record for speedrunning Nexus at one point. Oh, nice. Um, and then uh, the um, I forget it. Oh, I feel so bad. I forget its name. The weapon, the nightmare, the nightmare uh, box. Um, oh, nightmare. The, okay. the nightmare box can clip you through any wall, so the game can be completed in about thirty minutes. Really? Yeah, um, it's a really nice. interesting run, but I'm really bad at it. It takes some ridiculously precise. Um, box physics uh do you want to do one or two paths here because they're not too long oh. um yeah let's do uh uh first do the one that goes to the alien queen okay cool um and then and then afterwards... oh, i'm sorry i have to i have to buy the taunter it's utterly useless but i have to buy <laughs> you know what i when i was testing the game i loved the taunter yeah specifically for its interaction with the mind work did you Question: Did you spot the glitch in the uh, in the hover bike races, the hoverboard races with the taunter and getting infinite bolts? No, but my uh, one of my one of my coworkers did. But we only got it for the Japanese version. Oh really? Yeah. So it's not we, in the Japanese version. It shouldn't be in the Japanese version, which means it's probably not in this version. Um, it actually is, because um, oh. the way the way you do it is, or the way you probably know of, is um, by going into the uh, I forget the name of it. The thing that turns you into a robot um and talking to the lady um and then uh you you go into the races with uh without the hoverboard uh no, that wasn't the one i knew there was a different oh, one what was the one the one that that doesn't work in this version anymore because that worked in the ps2 version it doesn't anymore um the one that we use now is um you clip through the wall with um with uh the decoy glove oh okay yeah, the, the one that uh, the one that my friend caught was it in um, in that level. There's a point where you go underneath the water, right? Like there's an elevator. There's a spot you can stand where Ratchet stands on a tiny little hill, and whenever you stand on a hill, Ratchet puts his guns facing upward, 
Right. So the taunter was facing up towards the crates on the, the hover bike track. So you could break them and the bolts would fly at you through the walls. Oh, and you could okay. just hit bolts by holding down the taunter. That was the one I knew about. Right. We Well, now you actually have to get into the hover bike track itself. Okay. Yeah, that's um, a little bit harder than the one we found. Yeah, it's more elaborate now. Uh, but it is still possible. And that's how I got... Who... It's Idle Mind, I know, but... Who thought it was a good idea to have a trophy, a silver, not gold, for one million bolts and Ratchet 1? That is five <laughs> playthroughs. Screw isn't that. Much, that. Isn't you, that how much the Rhino costs? The Rhino costs 150,000. Oh, okay. If you, so if you are to buy everything in the game, it's 500,000 bolts, which is roughly two or three playthroughs. And that's just One a million for a silver throw! Why? Who oh. thought that was a good idea? Well, you know, there's somebody who actually cycled the bolt counter in Ratchet 2. Like, they, they got it up to the max number, and then got one more bolt, and it turned into a negative number. Really? What's yeah, the because in Ratchet 1 and Ratchet 2, there weren't any caps on how many bolts you could get. What's, so you just, what's the max? whenever whenever you get to the uh, the largest number that could be represented by a 16-bit integer, right? Mm. Which is, uh, it's some uh, tens of millions, I think. Wow. Uh, a signed 16-bit integer. Then what happens when you add one to the maximum of that is it turns into the minimum. It turns into negative whatever that number is. Right. So this, this guy actually had written us asking what the bolt max was and I told him there's no bolt max uh, but if you get it and then you get one more bolt you cycle around to negative whatever's and then you'll have to get it all again oh god you know, you to buy anything right uh. so I, was, I was trying to tell him that so he wouldn't do it but then he spent like a year playing the game just to see if he could do it he's probably and he a did. speed runner <laughs> guarantees so he's a speed a runner of, it, it could be yeah I mean it was on it's on YouTube of, of him getting the, the bolt cap and cycling it it's pretty cool so cool yeah, we were really impressed because we, we calculated that it should take five years, I think, of, a, of somebody playing it part-time, mm. or uh, I think it was three to four years of playing it eight hours a day. Oh to, my god. To, and uh, he did it faster than that because he was exploiting glitches, obviously. But yeah, well played. We have systems in the game that are supposed to keep you from getting bolts so much faster than we thought. Mm. Like there's a there's an invisible thing in the background that says, this is how fast you're supposed to be getting bolts, and if somehow you find a way to get faster than that, fewer bolts appear in future crates, right? Right. Uh, and uh, if you break the system by getting bolts through glitches, that doesn't happen, right? So he was able to get it faster. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Ratchet looked really creepy for a second. <laughs> <laughs> when he does the the golden bolt animation. Yeah. He's just like, look. Are you proud? I'm proud. I got this boat. Those alien things scared the crap out of me when I was playing the game. Like, they were the... one yeah. of the, Like, because when you play with Clank, they insta-kill you. Yeah, they're really big. And then having fought them with Ratchet and then being so... Yeah, it was just... For some reason, they, they felt really scary to me. Mm -hmm. So gonna, fighting that queen... Fighting the queen boss, you know, was... I'm gonna, was I'm gonna try and get the skill point on the queen. Nice. Was that no damage? Uh, wrench only. Oh, okay. I think uh, I tested that skill point too. Ah. I used to, I swear to God, I used to be great at this game when I was a tester. Well, that, the, you, you played it how many hours a day? Yeah, it was, you know, it was uh, 12 to 16 hours a day, seven ah. days. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, I God. It, and then as soon as it came out, I never wanted to see it again. <laughs> Because, you know, who, who I, wants to... Yeah, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and also we had started on Ratchet 2, so it wasn't like there was a lot of time for me to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, but, the, you know, it's funny. So I, I, I have such strong memories of this boss and of fighting her, but uh, I, if you'd asked me about her a week ago, I don't know if I could have told you what she did in the game. Yeah. Like, uh, for some reason, I just didn't remember she existed until about a week ago. <laughs> Victory! Victory! 
And it didn't give me the skill point because... Don't tell me I have to do it with the enemies as well, really? Yeah, yeah. It's because you used the flamethrower on the enemies. Uh, but that's not the boss. <laughs> I can't all I oh well, never mind. I, I'll bet you the way they check is to see if you um, pull out the weapon or something. Probably. Oh well, never mind. Oh yeah, you have to save this guy. Technically I'm incinerating him as well, but whatever. <laughs> well, fortunately, Gadgetron weapons don't hurt nice people. Ah. But he doesn't seem like a nice guy. He, he rips me off for these things. <laughs> they, uh, he does kind of give you the... The, the, what's the word? The, he totally completely screws you over. Yeah. Viola! My soon-to-be patented grind. I love how he says viola instead of voila. I need to get out of here. Viola, yeah. How about I sell you these? At cost. Sell? After we just saved At your cost. Bus. Yeah, we uh, right. we stopped. Too. After I think it was after Ratchet Two, we stopped well, making you I'm pay bolts to progress because nobody likes it. Did you? You've got the grind. Like in Ratchet Three, we don't feel like do that's that. not true. I'm pretty sure, because it was supposed to be a no-no. I don't know. Is that maybe them? Maybe you're right. Well, we, we you know, in that's this game... probably true, actually, make, yeah. We make you buy info bots. You know? Yeah, that's true. And in Ratchet, and it, and in Ratchet 2, you make me pay 40000 for an info yep. bot from that one mutant crap. Yeah. Thing. And after that, I think uh, that, uh, that, that game was the last time we would charge you bolts for... Uh, yeah. Progression. Because mainly, but yeah, it was just, you'd already fought through and got to the end of the level. Like, why why are we making it cost more? Why did people hate the Orange HUD in, in Ratchet 3? I really liked it. Because it's scarish. Is it? You know, it's just so orange, man. I like it, though. I thought uh, you it know, looked really were, nice. There were people who liked it. There were just a ton of people who didn't like it. That's all. You know, that like, really surprises me. Uh, that's I why seen, we. I see was, nothing wrong with it. That's why we say it was controversial. Mm. And it does look a lot better in the HD version than it did in the PS2 version, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I I still didn't think it looked bad, but maybe that's just me. I like orange. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had spent the whole project being used to the blue HUD. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then it just sort of changed in the last couple of weeks. Hmm. So everybody at that point had thought, oh, the blue's good, you know, and then it changed and everybody's always resistant to change. Like um, in Resistance, we, we called it I-8 for most of development. And by the time we got around to naming it, nobody wanted to call it anything but I-8, mm. uh, you know, because we'd gotten attached to it. Yeah. But what I've, what I've learned is that 0% uh, of the time do I ever like what we name the games until about a year after they're they're named. So... I've stopped caring as much what we name games mm. because I know I'll like it after a year. Yeah. Assuming the game does any business, you know. Like uh, 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 Skylanders was one of the exceptions, though. I liked Skylanders when they suggested the name. Mm. Yeah. The, how, uh, how long uh, in production did it take for it to be called Skylanders? It wasn't until the last year. So uh, it was. How it long was, was it in production? Uh, I think. Three or four years. It was since uh, since Vivendi sold, uh, or since Vivendi bought Universal, they were working on it about that long. Two thousand and eight, I think. But it wasn't Toys to Life for all of that time. So I think it was Toys to Life for about three years. Yeah, there was a thing called there, there was a thing going on the internet. Was it originally called Spyro's Kingdom? Spyro's Kingdom was still Toys to Life, right? It was the oh, really? big portal. Oh, really? I, I thought um, I thought Spyro's Kingdom was um, a completely different thing. It, it uh, was a it was a different game, but it was still putting things on the portal and ah, bringing okay. them. To uh, before that, there were other things like uh, other toy based ideas, or one of them was like Origami Spyro, where he was made out of paper. <laughs> and oh, he that would have been cool. He would he was running around on real world bookshelves and, and stuff. And everyone would have complained. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah, we, we uh, to a certain extent, people were going to complain, regardless. Yeah, but we also not wanted classic to, But we also wanted to make sure that uh, we did as much to honor, like Skylanders, 
is a very Spyro-ish IP, even though yeah. it's completely different. Oh, yeah. That's that's what I loved about it. As soon as I played it, I was like, this feels like Spyro. It's not Spyro, it's more Skylanders, but it, it has yeah. the essence and the, the feel of a Spyro game. That's, um, and that was intentional. Like, yeah. uh, Toy Story Bob tried really hard to integrate Spyro-ish things. I mean, we didn't have Hunter or a number of the other things, but they really wanted it to feel like the kind of world that Spyro would be in. Yeah, but you had and Cinder, and Cinder is badass, so... Oh, yeah. I, we were as she came out. I love lightning that look cool. Let's just say that. <laughs> If and you, purple, if purple you, and black hey, lightning is always a good it thing. It really is. Uh, yeah. It really is. It also, it? Oh, Cinder didn't look that great in the old games, so I, I think she kind of her new look was an improvement. I thought. I, I think she looks quite good in the Legend of, but I, but I, I prefer her in Skylanders. In the I, first game, didn't she have like a real? Oh, she was huge. Yeah, she was a yeah. giant dragon. That was when she, she was, was evil, though, right? Yes. Yes. I never played. I never played those Spyro games. I only played the first you're not, three. You're not missing out. Then well, my not buddy, good. <laughs> my buddy Mike, who's who's currently the design producer on Skylanders, he worked on uh, I think all of them, but the one right after. Right. And up, like number four. Because I I feel like saying the Eternal Night is the worst offender of the Spyro series. It's Which one was that? That's the second of the series. Of the, Which was the uh, Legend of. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, uh, the way he tells it, it's uh, it sounds just so sad. Like he, because and... the the thing I have to, I, I'm intrigued because I I, I want to hear what you say. But here's like, because I just finished the let's play of it, and sure. or in terms of uploading, it's not up yet. But it's just it starts off much better than the first. The graphics are really nice. The the, the first one suffers from the fact that oh. every enemy okay. is exactly don't, the same. Don't hit the button after you kill these guys. I want to talk about something, but keep okay. going. Yeah. Um, yeah, the game suffers from all the enemies are pretty much the same, so it's kind of repetitive. And the second one fixes that instantly. There's loads of variety in enemies. It's just it's really nice to to see. Um, and then the game becomes unbearably difficult and pointless. Like you go for a section where you fly from ship to ship, and by flying and glide, you get killed by nothing every so often. The bosses are unfairly difficult, and at the end of it, he just flies away. Why not just <laughs> fly to the boss? I hate that so much. I well, spent an it... hour suffering, and then you just fly? You <laughs> bastard, why? And the entire yeah. game does that. It just teases you with bullshit until it does the final I hate you move. It's just like, ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, go I'll, on. I'll, I'll, speak, I'll speak to it in a second. Let me tell you yeah. my story about this button real yes. quick. Yes, the big uh, red so... shiny button. I love this that. is I, I learned a very important lesson from this this button This okay. is maybe one of the most important lessons I've ever learned in, in game design it does not matter how long the timer is as long as there's a timer people will lose their fucking minds teal <laughs> all of a sudden otherwise intelligent people turn into fucking idiots like they just make every mistake right so originally, the, the timer on this button was really tight, right? You had to do a really good job to get to the end. But in every user test, nobody could do it, even though it wasn't even like, it wasn't that bad, right? Mm -hmm. But people just couldn't do it. So we, we kept loosening it and loosening it. Finally, we just multiplied it by four. <laughs> and then people were still not doing it because they were dying because they were trying so hard to run to get you know so what i learned was big red shiny buttons that cause timers are they make the game harder because they make you scared right. not because they make a timer yeah so anyway go ahead and hit it i just wanted to tell that story that's uh, so true though <laughs> speaking that's to hilarious. Look, this timer is really loose like it's it's maybe 30 seconds more than you need and people still I think die i think it's 20. Yeah, people still die getting to so you, the end of it. You only get 45 seconds. So if it was four times as much, that's only 10 seconds. That's impossible. It couldn't have been that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how long it took you to uh, to take, how long it'll take you to get to the end. It'll take me like 20, yeah. 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, we did. We did okay, increase okay, it. Well. Okay, 16. It 16. But yeah, so you know, it's it's more than twice yeah. what it actually takes to get there. Uh, and if you hadn't been attacking guys, it probably would take even less. You know. Yeah. But the uh, 
the so about the Spyro thing, I can talk yeah. to it just a little before we're done. Yeah, okay. Um, from what I heard, the budgets on those games were really low. Really? Right? Yeah, the they were just mic just this tiny, tiny little budgets. And the the producers who were working on the game really, really wanted them to be great, mm. but they only had, you know, however much like a, a million bucks or something, right? right? Which is nothing nothing to make a game. Yeah. And to the point where the two producers, you know, the the say the development studio might have been in the Ukraine, right? They would spend months in the Ukraine just trying to help them hammer out all the problems with the game and fix it and make it cool, right? So a lot there were a lot of struggles that they had to go through to make the games even as playable as they were. Right. So it when when you when you look at Skylanders, right, coming after that, you look at a project that has the exact opposite, right? Like Skylanders had, I don't know, a hundred million dollars or something. Maybe not that much, but it was a lot of money, right? Mm. And and if you spend a hundred times more, oh, there's Dan. Yep, there he is. If you spend a hundred times more, you have a lot more leeway, you know. Mm. So uh, I don't really blame the people involved for the no. quality of the games. I more blame the fact that Universal really didn't want to give them budgets. Yeah. What did um, what did your friend do in the game? He was uh, he was the one of the two producers that was on the game. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Say- and he- because I, I really like the art. St- whoever, did, whoever did the arts, the art direction was did a great job. Because the art direction really looked, uh, the game looks stunning. It looks visually really good, but it just so many things are just there's so many problems with it. Because presumably they didn't have time and budget. Uh, it's just really disappointing. Because I I went into it, it was like I want this to be fun. I want this <laughs> to be fun. There's yeah. so much potential here. What you need is a map because everything looks pretty much the same. It would be nice to have a map to know how far you are. And it would be nice if the strafing was better. It would be nice if the if yeah. the, if the uh, different breaths did more and if the bosses weren't so annoying. But uh, it's just... You can, it, see, you can see, though, why we would spend so much time on the gameplay in Skylanders. Yeah, no, I, I Ra- rather than you know making a, a Spyro game, it was it was uh, it was the first focus was the gameplay, you know, and that was to make things like what had happened with the Spyro games not happen. Mm. So, it's good. That's that's a thing that Activision is really good at is uh, in general supporting the 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 studios that are doing things like this. Like, um, I think in Skylanders. Uh, you know, it was supposed to come out a year before it did. And if it had, it probably wouldn't have succeeded. But Activision said, no, nah, we're going to give you a mess more money. You guys just go for broke. And they did. So, And it but worked yes. very, very well because it's a multi-billion dollar and, franchise now. And Spyro didn't have those opportunities, you know, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, it looks like we're done with this level. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure when we'll be able to do more of these. This will be the end of this recording session, but uh, I would like to. Yeah, no, it was it was great fun. So uh, anyway, for developer commentary, my name's Mike Stout, and I'm Teal, and I had a blast. Thank you for having me. And thank you for doing this with me, Teal. This was fun. Yeah, it was. It was great. All right. See everybody later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.